All right, how's it going? Uh, Coach Pat here, and today we're going to do a quick review of Virtual Rowing 101. Uh, what are some of the best tips and tricks that you can use while we're stuck inside during these uh, challenging COVID weeks? And, uh, you know, get your best rowing workout or even just fitness workout in. Uh, so, uh, to start, I'm going to share my rowing studio with you, sort of the space I've set up. This used to be our office. We cleared it out, made a little bit of space. I now have my rowing machine, a little yoga mat, a uh, foam roller, kettlebell, a couple of things to, uh, to get my fitness on. But uh, this is also where I teach. So if you ever join us for a uh, virtual rowing class on Mondays or Wednesdays at 6 p.m., uh, you might also hear my dog Fergus in the background. Uh, this is where we'll be. This is where we'll be teaching from. So uh, to get us started, let's take a quick look at the whiteboard. So here is what we're going to go over today, Virtual Rowing 101. We're going to do a quick chat about setup. So uh, three things. Number one, make sure you're wearing Bluetooth headphones and they're connected to your uh, virtual streaming device. Number two, make sure your device placement is about 45 degrees in front of you. I'll show you that in a second. And then number three, uh, if you like music when you work out, which I do, uh, you know, helps you keep keep uh, things flowing, keep, uh, keep you in the mood. Um, separate device for background music. Uh, sometimes music doesn't quite carry, uh, carry well through you know, the virtual uh, chat rooms and, and things like that. So um, let's do a quick look at setup. So uh, I'll flip the camera back around. You might be able to see I have some Bluetooth headphones on. Uh, they kind of just clip over my ear, they fit in, and they're connected to uh, my phone. And the phone is uh, my phone or my computer, uh, which is what I use to coach class or take a class when I'm taking a virtual class. Uh, so these are super helpful. Uh, they actually will allow you to hear the coach, give you cues, you know, tell you what you're doing, uh, you know, keep you moving, kind of keep you um, making good adjustments as you row versus just kind of going through the workout. You know, it's almost, you know, the one thing we don't have right now is our ability to be in a room with a coach who can fix us and, and make us better. So uh, these Bluetooth headphones, uh, any version that you have can be super helpful in allowing you to hear what's happening, especially with regards to how loud uh, the rowing machine can be sometimes or the music in the background, um, if you like to really bump it. Uh, so number one, make sure you get those headphones. Number two, device placement. I'm gonna show you my uh, setup for uh, doing a virtual row. Flip the camera around here. Here's a little stool that I set up with my computer, and I'm actually streaming through Zoom right now. Uh, and I have a Zoom meeting set up where I can take a virtual rowing class or uh, teach a virtual rowing class. And the key is that that computer, that device, is set up about 45 degrees in front of the rowing machine. So there's the rowing machine, computer, about 45 degrees out in front. It should be, you know, somewhere about even with the fan. And that's going to allow you to do a couple of things. When you're rowing, you want to be able to see the coach and or the rest of the people that you're rowing with on the screen. So while you're rowing, having it out in front of you at about 45 degrees allows you to see them. Uh, number two, when we, when we kind of run our virtual rowing classes, we like to use different people in the class to set the stroke and uh, you know, lead the workout. And it helps to be able to uh, follow them if you can actually see them and they can see you. So if you happen to be leading, like if I'm coaching and I'm leading a warm-up, it helps for people to be able to see my whole stroke. So both, both up here at the catch where the handle is and then back here at the finish and be able to match my rhythm and timing. So having that set up with the device out in front at 45 degrees is uh, super cool. Last but not least, separate device for music. Uh, I got a couple of speakers up there little audio cord. I'll plug in a different phone or, um, you know, get the radio going, maybe a little Google or Amazon speaker going uh, in the background for my music. And that allows you to still hear music in the background, but also hear the coach through your Bluetooth headphones. Um, so that's kind of set up. The only other thing I'd say, like bonus tips, uh, if you have space, have a little mat set up next to your rowing machine. That's going to allow you to do some stretching. Uh, and or other functional movements during the, the workout. Uh, get off the rowing machine and get a, you know, some good functional work in. Uh, and that can be really good too. Um, 
Once we get uh, into some rowing tips for the day, I'm also going to show you what I'm going to do with these socks. So if you have a pair of socks handy, uh, this can help you too. Um, so uh, once you have that set up, then it comes to execution. So when you're in that virtual rowing class, what are the things you need to do to you know, have a good experience? So uh, number one, double tap or click, double tap or double click on the camera view to pin it. That way you can sort of focus on one screen and follow one person. So for instance, right now uh, in my Zoom meeting, I have two people in this meeting. I'll go on my computer to gallery view. You can kind of see the two people. Uh, the first view is uh, from the front, and then I have another uh, virtual person, which is my iPhone uh, set up in the back. So it's in the back of the room back there. So this is the two different views. Imagine they're two different people. If I'm coaching, I'm like, all right, I want you guys to follow Patrick's iPhone, which is labeled right there in the bottom co corner. All I need to do is go back to uh, you know speaker view. Uh, if you're on a computer, find Patrick's iPhone, double click it. It'll bring it up and you can pin it. And uh, it'll stay there even as the coach is talking. So even as different people talk, it'll keep that screen pinned there. Uh, on your phone, uh, you can actually just look at the gallery view and using your finger on your phone, you can double tap it um, and uh, pin it. If you actually right click on your uh, um, computer, I believe you can, uh, oh, not quite, but um, maybe it's up here in the top. Now, I think on the computer, it's just the speaker view, top right corner, and then uh, double click to pin it. Uh, see how it says uh, unpin venue, I can click unpin to unpin it and then it'll change back to whoever's talking. Um, so practice being able to set uh, which which person you're looking at and that'll allow you to uh, follow the person that the coach is uh, queuing and, and sort of calling strokes for. Um, number two, mirror the lead rower. So once you've pinned that rower, if uh, you're still new to rowing or you want, you know, working on, you know, one piece of your technique or sort of one focus for the workout, do your best to imagine that's a mirror. So, you know, if you're watching someone and you see them, imagine that device is just a mirror and you're going to mirror everything they do. So when their hands go away, your hands go away. When they slide up, you slide up. When they catch and drive those knees down, you drive your knees down. So make sure you're mirroring the person uh, in your meeting, and that way you can kind of have the same rhythm and timing. It helps the coach uh, to call uh, different uh, focuses for the workout. And then last but not least, number three, uh, learn how to unmute and mute yourself to ask a question. Uh, most of the time, the coach will probably have everybody in the class muted so that it's uh, sort of easier for everyone to hear and it's a better uh, audio experience. The mute is usually in the bottom left corner, uh, so click on that microphone to unmute it. You kind of hear it working now. Uh, if you don't want that background noise or you know, you're done asking your question, make sure you always re-mute yourself so that uh, you know, keep the class rolling. Um, so muting and unmuting. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of that's the focus. Um, let me give you a quick view of what the camera looks like uh, or what the phone looks like. So here's the phone view. You can just swipe uh, to sort of see different people in the gallery, but if you simply double tap on any view, uh, that'll pin it uh, to your camera so that you can follow it. So you just double tap and that'll pin that, uh, that view. Um, so that's what the phone looks like. And of course the mute button, um, if we go to the regular view, the, the mute button is down here in the bottom left corner. Um, so just make sure you mute and unmute yourself when you need to ask a question. All right. Uh, so that kind of gets us into the workout, right? So if you have a good setup, Bluetooth headphones, devices uh, placed at 45 degrees in front of you, you have a separate device for music, and then during the class you're executing by double tapping or double clicking on the camera view that the coach tells you to and pinning it to your screen, mirroring that lead rower, and then, you know, making sure you unmute and mute yourself whenever you have to ask a question. You'll be good to go. It'll be an awesome class. Uh, a couple of things that we're focusing on in these first couple of weeks for uh, our rowing classes are going to be uh, three things, a pressed and a balanced finish, body prep, and weight on your seat, 
making sure we prepare the body and get the weight to the front edge of the seat, and then connection. So at the front end, making sure the feet and the handle are moving together. Uh, so I'll show you a quick demo of what those three things are, and then uh, you guys should be good to go. You can join in tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, or any Monday or Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, just get in touch, and I'll uh, hook you up, and we'll have an awesome class. So uh, the three things that we're working on uh, in terms of rowing tips, Use a pair of socks. If you have an extra pair of socks laying around, uh, you know, in the boathouse, if we were in the boathouse right now, I'd cut up some foam and use some foam for you. But at home, everybody has socks, hopefully, right? So uh, take these socks, just any, any old socks, and use them as tactile feedback. So notice I have my shoes off. I would start every warm-up without your shoes so you can find good connection and good balance through your footboard. When you get back into the workout, maybe you put your shoes back on and uh, wear your shoes from there. But it's always nice to sort of row uh, both with socks and with your feet unstrapped. So I'm always going to have people start the warm-up with their feet unstrapped. So you're going to put your foot on top of the straps, you know, start doing the rowing warm-up. Um, if you have socks, fold them in half. You can start working on that first skill by just place that sock right under the ball of your foot on each foot. And just use it as some tactile feedback. You know it's there, right? And it, it sort of keeps it front of mind. When I talk about our first skill of the press and balance finish, every time you finish the stroke, you want to make sure your feet are pointed and pressing through the footboards, a.k.a. the socks. Make sure you're sort of thinking about squeezing those, those socks into the footboards as we finish the stroke. And whether it's you're taking full strokes or even in the warm-up, when we're just warming up arms only or arms and body or half slide, every time we finish that stroke, we want to be pressing those feet into the footboard. So we're pressed, we're up, we're balanced, and uh, those socks can be helpful with that. Another place you can put the socks uh, for that second skill, preparing the body, getting the weight over the front edge of the sheet, take your socks just put it right on the front edge of your seat, right underneath your high hamstring on each side. And then, you know, as you're rowing, even in the warm-up, you could put it there if uh, this is a skill you need to work on. Rowing arms only here. We're in this layback position. Our weight's on the back edge of the feet, all right? We're pressed and balanced to the feet, but the weight, you can feel it, is on your sit bones on the back edge of the feet. Every time we recover... We want to prepare the body, get the body angled forward, shoulder in front of the hip, good posture, everything strong and locked in. And I like to say you want to land softly in a good position on the front edge of your seat. When you shift the weight, you can feel those socks right in your high hamstrings, sort of pressing those high hamstrings on the front edge of the seat. That tells you you shifted your weight, you're in a good position, your body is prepared, and then we can come up the slide. So when you take regular strokes, finish, get the body over those socks. Get the body weight to the front edge of the feet before we break the knees, before we let the feet slide forward. So number one was that press and balance finish. Number two was that body prep, getting the weight to the front edge of the feet before we let the feet move. All right, and then number three is connection. Connection, it's pretty easy. If you take your, your finger sort of as you're warming up or taking your first strokes of the day, touch the end of your handle, touch your shoulder, touch your hip. Those three points need to stay connected. An easy cue that I'll say is your feet and your handle. Your feet and your handle need to stay connected and move together. So in the front end of the stroke, the front half here, if the handle moves three inches, your feet move three inches, and they move together. If you see this, the handle moved, but the seat didn't move. If you see this, the seat moved, but the handle did not move. Both are bad. They're common errors. So make sure you're keeping your chest up, keeping everything connected and locked, and you're just focusing on pushing your knees down, getting the stroke started with connection, seat and handle moving together. Cool. Those are the three tips. So press and balance, body prepared, weight over the front edge of the seat, and then that will allow you to have good connection up here at the front end. Cool, so hopefully that little sock trip, trick will come in handy. Feel free to use them. Uh, there's other things we'll talk about in terms of hanging and suspending off the handle uh, if you're sitting on socks or piece of foam uh, that we'll get into 
later on. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on Monday and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Have a good one.